In this video, we're going to look at complex numbers. And complex numbers were actually um, born out of mathematicians trying to solve cubic equations, equations with x cubed in them. And they actually have uses today in, the, um, in science and other fields. They're a little bit strange for students to get used to. So let's just jump right in here. A complex number is in the form a plus bi. All right, what is i? What is this i thing? Well, i is a number that's defined as the square root of negative 1. Now, if you've worked with square roots before, you know the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3, and all that good stuff. But if I give you, you know, the square root of 1 is 1, but if I give you square root of negative 1, you're stuck. Because we say, oh, we can't take the square root of a negative. There's no answer to the square root of a negative. Well, that's true. In the real numbers, there's no real number that's the square root of a negative number. But in the complex numbers, we do have answers to the square roots of negatives. And this is our big help right here. The square root of negative 1 is i. So now we could handle something like the square root of negative 4. So what we would do is we would say, well, we know that negative 4 is negative 1 times 4. And by our rules of dealing with radicals, we could split this up. So the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 4 is 2. So our answer is i times 2, which we usually write as 2i. How about that? Pretty weird, huh? Well, those are complex numbers. Now, what we have so far with this 2i is just this part of it. So if, it were, if we were to write it as a complex number, we would say 0 plus 2i. Okay, so that's sort of a little introduction. Now, this a number right here is called the real part. The real part. And the b number there is called the imaginary part of the complex number. So let's choose that. All right, the imaginary part. Oops, imaginary part of the real number, of the complex number. So most complex numbers are going to be in the form. They're going to look like uh, 3 plus 2i or maybe negative 1 plus 6i. All right, so we would say the 3 is the real part, and the 2 is the, the 2i is the imaginary part, so the 2 would be the coefficient on that. And in coming videos, in my next video, which I'll link to from this video, we're going to talk about how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide with complex numbers. So before we do some more simplifying, um, one thing I want you to know is that real numbers are a subset of the complex numbers. All right, so we have these complex numbers, and real numbers are complex numbers. So let's think of a real number, like 6. All right, 6 is a real number. So how would I write that as a complex number in this form, a plus bi? Well, I would just say it's 6 plus 0i. So real numbers are basically where you have a complex number where b is equal to 0. That's why real numbers are a subset of the complex numbers, because you can write them that way. All right, let's get back to working with some examples here on how to simplify and work with complex numbers. So I'm going to leave this square root of negative 1 equals i, because that's really important. And there's one other important, I'm going to get rid of that, one other important fact that we need when working with complex numbers. And the way we could get this fact is to square both sides of this equation. All right, so if I square both sides of that, the square root and the squared sort of undo each other. If you want to think of it as a fractional exponent, remember a square root means to the 1 half power. And I'm squaring that. So by the laws of exponents, when I multiply these exponents together, I get negative 1 to the first power, which is just negative 1. And then on this side over here, I get i squared. All right, so this is a very important rule that we're going to be using a lot, very important fact, I should say, that negative 1 equals i squared, and then negative 
1, the square root of that equals i. Okay, so these are your two kind of important things that you need to remember when working with complex numbers. So let's see how we would simplify another radical. So we're used to simplifying stuff like the square root of 80, but what about the square root of negative 80? So if we wanted to simplify that, we're going to look for a perfect square that goes into 80. Let's see, I'm thinking about my perfect squares, 4, 9, 16, 25. 4 definitely goes into 80. That would be uh, 4 times 20, right? And 20 breaks down to 4 times 5, so I think there's two 4s that are a factor of 80. I think 80 is 16 times 5. Now I also have this negative in here, right? So I have negative 1 times 16 times 5. So I can, and you don't have to write this next step out most of the time when you're doing these problems, but just for clarity, I'm going to do that. So you have square root negative 1 times square root 16 times square root 5. Square root of negative 1 is, hopefully you're getting used to it, i. Square root of 16 is 4. And then the square root of 5 just has to stay like that. So I would write this as 4i. It's not wrong the other way, but in, conventionally we write it sort of like i is a variable. Even though it's not, i is not a variable. It's the square root of negative 1. So in the complex numbers, the square root of negative 80 is 4i root 5. Now, remember, if you didn't have that negative there, let's do this in light blue, if you just had square root of 80, You'd simplify that down, and you just like we did, and you'd get 4 root 5. So the only difference when you have this negative in here is that you take that negative out of the square root, and it becomes this i right here. So you're going to simplify basically in the same way, except with the negative, you end up with an i outside of the radical. All right, let's do a one more where you have to use the i squared equals negative 1 business. So let's say you were simplifying, you wanted to multiply two of these complex numbers together, although we're not going to multiply two of the a plus bi type numbers. Let's just say we have a is 0, so let's say we have 3i times, oh I don't know, how about 5i? And we want to multiply those together. So this is all multiplication, right? It's 3 times i times 5 times i. So we could rearrange this and think of it as 3 times 5 times i times i. So 3 times 5 is 15. i times i would be i squared. Now remember, i squared is negative 1. So this is 15 times negative 1, which is negative 15. And that's the answer. Okay, so you can have an i in your answer, but generally you don't want any power of i in your answer. If you end up with an i squared, you want to change that to a negative 1. Um, let's see. I think I was thinking of one more type of example to show you. So let's say we wanted to do... Um, let me just make a little room here. We'll leave these here. Let's say we were looking at 5i quantity squared. All right. You think about how to do that. What would you do? So hopefully you're thinking, well, that's 5i times 5i, which is 25i squared. i squared is negative 1, so it's 25 times negative 1 which is negative 25. Now, what if I have the square root of negative 25? Let's go backwards now and do it. The first, the first kind of problem that we did, square root of negative 25. So that's like square root negative 1 times square root 25. This is i. This is 5. So your answer is 5i. So you see how these two problems work together? Since 5i squared is negative 25, that must mean that the square root of negative 25 is 5i. That's what a square root means. A square root means what times itself is negative 25. 
And since 5i times itself, or 5i squared, is negative 25, it makes sense, hopefully, that these two ideas here go together. This is important to think about these two ideas right here. 5i squared is negative 25. So if I do the square root of negative 25, I should end up with 5i. All right, so in the next video, like I said, we're going to do adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing with complex numbers. So I encourage you to watch that next.